I wake up every morning, I smoke my cigarette, and I go onto my free wall, and I sit there and we practice our dots. And we'll sit there and do that for hours and hours and hours. Hi, my name is Preston Panic. I'm uh, 37 years old, and uh, I paint murals for a living all over Dallas. How did you get this job? This specific one? Oh, but how did you get into painting? How did you get into painting oh, murals? Well, I've been doing, I got into classic art into my early 20s, and um, I got picked up by a whole bunch of galleries real fast, just kind of out of nowhere. Um, and uh, then Betty Gertz bought 37 or so pieces of mine, which is huge, and it got put inside, inside of Architectural Digest, and then after that, it, everything kind of went crazy. Um, then I did lab art. I was the only artist from Dallas to do lab art along with like huge, huge people that um, all the biggest of the big of art of the art world, that's where they go is to, is to uh, have their stuff uh, in lab art. I was only supposed to be for one night and they kept me on for six weeks. After that happened, I started uh, wanting to do bigger pieces, but it's hard to sell 40 by 40 foot pieces of canvas to people. Um, and then I got introduced to walls, and they're like, we'll just do it here, and I did a couple with some friends, and then some of the older graffiti, really known artists here in Dallas kind of took me under their wing and showed me how to use this stuff, because this is a whole different world than painting like, like I was painting. Once they took me under their wing, and Isaac really showed me the, the techniques and stuff, and uh, then Adrian and I did our 10 free murals last year, and then it's been nuts ever since. This is not a traditional nine to five, but what, what hours what hours do you, do you work? So, we're lucky enough right now where there's enough jobs coming in that we kind of pick and choose which ones we like, which ones we think would be the, fun, the most fun to do. Um, I'm gonna pick a wall this size that may be a little cheaper if I get to do what I want to, what I want to do on it versus like a huge corporate thing where it's gonna take three months of contracts and a whole bunch of other stuff that goes into it. So, I mean, today we got up at, I mean, I did, probably did everything, the last loft before nine o'clock, and then jumped in, grabbed the paints, packed up, got here, and I'll be here till nine or 10 tonight. So you, you touched on it a little bit, but what, what kind of education or training do you have to have to get to get into this? Um, well, uh, not too much education. So, so to say, I went back to Lake Highlands after I left uh, Benning Oaks, and I left uh, six months before I graduated, got a GED, and just started doing art on my own. Um, tried to do stuff in front of my house where people would buy canvases and slowly but surely saved up enough money over well, five or six years to really, really start getting into it. But um, training wise, as far as art's concerned, it's not so much training as it is having your own style and, and having the ability to get out there and present your style to everybody else and make everyone else believe in what your style is. Um, and for spray paint, it's a whole other situation. Spray paint training, um, I'm sure you see on my Facebook, I have the practice board. It is a daily situation. It's just like uh, being a professional athlete or something. You wake up every day and you shoot that free throw 300 times a day. I wake up every morning, I smoke my cigarette, and I go onto my free wall, and I sit there and we practice our dots and see how far we can get them down and, and what we can do, and then try to practice our curves when we're making our bubbles and stuff. And, We'll sit there and do that for hours and hours and hours so that when you get on a wall like this, and there's, today there's nobody here, we're early, but when there's you know, like 100 people watching you do it, you're able to just walk up there and do it. What's the best part of this? Of this The best day? part of it? Yeah. Walking in places and somebody finding out that your name's Preston Panic and they go, you did this one, oh, or this one, or my kids love this mural. We've seen it, we go there all the time. Oh, I don't believe that you did this with Daffy Duck or the Monopoly Man or they, that's, that's the funnest part, 100%. Well, on the other side of that, worse, what's the, what's the worst thing about this job? Corporate people. If you could just go ahead and make sure you do that from now on, that would be great. <laughs> <laughs> you, when we started, I thought that, that you wanted those, you know, $100,000 corporate jobs or the $50,000 corporate jobs, and you do, and that's, that's always, you know, fun to get. But those jobs will take you a year of meetings before you even get anywhere close to getting them done. And then you got 15 different people to make happy while they're all coming through trying to change it. Well, maybe we could do this color, and then, then somebody else will come in and they'll be like, well, let's change that and do it this way, and there's no really ever one person to answer to, and I like
like small businesses, people that own their own property, a family that wants something done, that's, those are the ones that I like the best. So would you say this is your ideal dream, dream, dream job? Oh yeah. <laughs> I get to wake up and paint and do this. Um, the reason I do so many free murals is, is, well, I'm gonna paint at my house anyway, so I might as well paint it on the street somewhere. So do you still see yourself doing this in five years? Yes, very much so, and on a much bigger scale too. And, um, and outside of here, we'd like to take this to Mexico really, really bad to do a road trip down there and just start doing free walls all the way through. And um, my girlfriend, Adrian, who helps me with all these murals, uh, we definitely are working towards um, maybe like a United States road trip um, with a travel trailer and just hitting random spots where you don't see art, like the side of a barn in the middle of Texas, in the middle of nowhere, do something like this. Where you just were like, what, just, what is that? And just completely switch everybody for a second. Do you got any advice to give someone that's trying to get into this industry? Getting into art? Um, one, find a real job first to pay for everything because spray paint is really expensive. One of these cans is like 10 bucks. Um, second of all, treat it like a business when you're doing it. People don't want you to come say that you're gonna do their walls and then show up and do half of it and then disappear. That seems to be a really big problem with a lot of artists is not following through and finishing what, they're, what they've started or not showing up on time or not, you know, not treating it like it's a job. It is a job. It may, it may be a fun job, but somebody's paying you usually a lot of money to do something for them. You need to take it with respect and, 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 and do your part to, to stay professional. And uh, the last part was is if you're looking to get your name out there, Stop trying to do it on a small scale. Go find a big wall that looks like someone's torn it up, like this torn up wall that's right here. I promise you, the person that owns this wall would rather have your art on it rather than they'd have that piece of torn up wall. And don't think about it as you're giving away free art by doing that mural. If you don't have a name out there, what you're doing is, is they're giving you a free billboard. Common misconceptions. Any common misconceptions about artists and painters and, and, and wall art? Spray paint artists especially. The first thing anybody walks up to me and goes, so you're a graffiti artist? That's 100%. They want to know if you also go around tagging people's buildings as soon as they see you touch spray paint. Got pulled over once in Deep Ellum because they thought I was a illegal graffiti artist because they saw the spray paint and everything on me. Until I get like a good set, until this, to get to this point where it's all taped off and everything's all set up, then they go, okay, it looks like he definitely has permission. But when I'm starting to set up the first time and I walk out and I look like this and oh yeah, people will walk up to you and I've, you know, they'll, they'll call the cops and say that you're not supposed to be there doing that. It can be weird sometimes, but once you get up going and people realize that you are supposed to be there, completely changes and everybody's really happy to see you. Music's so big and music's a big part of life. I noticed you got your ear pods on. Mm -hmm. So you get to listen to music while you're All working. day, every day, every, that's all I do is listen to music to the point to where I have to have these on because it drives my girlfriend or whoever I work with nuts. I listen to the same song on repeat for hours. So who you go, who's your Today is Logic. Logic, all right, I was so, gonna ask <laughs> you're into Logic. So right. today is a Logic album. Um, we're doing Martin Garrett straight through yesterday. Sometimes I'll pick a full concert if it's a really great set and just play the concert through repeat over and over and over and over and over again. What's your mindset in thinking and why why, why, they, why that? No, why not change it up? Why not listen to like, um, it? It keeps radio? you in the same space, man. Because music, it's especially Logic albums in particular, um, his music rises and falls just like a EDM album would. So it, it'll, it, it, it helps you with your art, it helps you stay concentrated. And once you know all the words and everything going on in it, you're not thinking, it's more like a meditation music behind your head and you're in a different space. And it's just keeping you in that space. Because once you change the song or say a bad song comes on you don't like, well then wherever you were, you're not there anymore. Vacation time. Do you get vacation time? You get your priority or are we just out to paint right now? Sometimes we do, sometimes we don't. It really depends on what you consider vacation time. Um, I do maybe a big project a month, which probably only takes about two weeks. So every other, so every two weeks a month, I don't, I don't work. Um, I'll sit the house and paint and stuff like that. But um, when it comes to going on vacations, the girlfriend and I do at least once a year outside of Texas. And then this year, because we got the new super truck for doing for doing all the crazy adventures that we do. We kayak and bike and all that kind of stuff. So this summer, I think we're gonna do quite a few on our the two weeks that we have off. We're gonna start doing trips and start, like I said, 
doing murals just randomly, but without the travel trailer, just to see how it works out. I probably, you probably already touched on it, but future plans. I mean, in down the road retirement. I mean, do you see that that road trip? And, and, and oh yeah, all that will definitely happen. Um, another big step we're working on is the House of Panic um, uh, installation, kind of like how they're doing Rainbow Vomit. And have you seen that yet? Rainbow Vomit's in Dad Deep or Fair Park. It's an installation we go into. They're called pop ups. Um, the Unicorn Cafe is one. Sweet Tooth Hotel. There's a couple of them that are out there. So we're gonna do the House of Panic one, um, and then we're also gonna do the Haunted House of Panic, which will be a um, complete immersive, like 3,000 square foot warehouse of art, but all in a haunted kind of cool way. Last question, last question. How did, how did to do over? Would you mm -hmm. do it again? Oh, like life in life. general? This whole thing, this, this choice. I would have picked up spray paint 15 years before I did. I did not know the benefits of it. I didn't know the, the, how, how fast you can move with it and just, it's a whole other world. I wish I had started here and not started where I did, but at the same time, doing all the gallery stuff and doing all the, and that's a whole other side of art. Doing that gave me the ability to find the clients that I have now. So sure. it, it does help out, but I just wish I was spray painting at least, you know, 10, 15 years. Before I started. <laughs> yeah, I get you there. Dude, oh, that's awesome. Killed it. Thank Killed you. it, man. Thanks, Preston. No problem. Hey, hey, hey. I'm on vacation every single day because I love my occupation. On the next work that we do, join me, Stephanie Houston, as I talk about my job as an entrepreneur. So hit the follow button and subscribe and that little bell notification too and keep up with work that we do. See you soon.